KTNT Radio and TV, Jesse Terrero right here with you, Jesse T. It's time for the Jesse T Show. Good to have you back with me. The Brown Beauty is back on duty. We are here in Yorba Linda, California. Yes, I'm not talking about your Belinda. I'm talking about your Belinda. Yeah, it used to be like a, a ranch town. Now there's houses and buildings everywhere. It's absolutely beautiful out here. Last time I was out here, probably about 25 years ago, working at a radio station in the Inland Empire. Oh, eons and eons ago when the Dead Sea was alive. But hey, we are broadcasting live here for a very special event, and it's an event that covers someone we had in on the TV and radio show this last week, and uh, we're talking about the cats and the crew from War Fighter. Now, what Warfighter is a is a movie that uh, details uh, our combatants, our our soldiers in arms, uh, over there fighting for our freedom here in the great beautiful United States of America, God's greatest country on the blue green earth historically. And uh, uh, Jerry Angelo came in, the writer, director, actor, uh, producer of Warfighter, to stop by the station, and we had a great interview with him and and uh, actor Scott and Grady, and you can kind of check it out what they're doing right now. They're kind of just rolling in over here with the Marines and, and doing what they're doing, taking some photos and doing that kind of stuff and, and getting the mayor in there. And we're going to get all these people in here, and we're going to be talking to all these people in just a second. going to let them take their photo ops here, and of course, but uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll around this side, and and I'm going to grab them, grab them over here. You can kind of see what's going on. Yes. Pictures, pictures. We love them. That's right. All right. So we're going to kind of roll around here and come on over here to this side. So we're going to grab these guys and talk to them as soon as they leave the photo area. And currently right there, we have uh, Jerry Angelo. Here, checking out. Jerry, 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 come here, man. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we are live right here on Facebook, Instagram, live stream, Periscope, and Twitter. We're on the air and everywhere from the community to the world, baby. It's good to be here in Yorba Linda with the warfighter himself, director, writer, producer, actor, uh, janitor, uh, craftsman services, uh, gaffer, jibber, a cameraman, uh, prayer of... Great money and funds coming in, Mr. Jerry Angelo. What's happening, brother? Hey, man, I'm, we got real. We got the real Marines. We got the real deer here. This is uh, Jerry. What's your name? Yes, Sergeant Pope. Oh, Pope. And and uh, what do you do? Are you a recruiter or are you? Uh, do you you work in the recruiting uh, station? Or? See, I'm a food service chief for the 11th Mew, um, and this is my color guard here. So we're ready to rock the show and uh, present the movie for the guys. Oh, that's fantastic. And your name? My name is Lance Corporal Leon. Uh, I'm with the 11th Mew uh, administrator a specialist with the Mew. I'm you guys look so great in your uniforms. You know, the beautiful thing, marine uniforms are always the best. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> they always have the most colors. Well, just, sir, I'm happy to be here. Absolutely. So how long have you been in service? Uh, it actually be five years on June 13th. Wow. So you re-upped once already? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Absolutely. How about you? Uh, two years, sir. In my two-year market is January. Yeah. Are you guys stationed here in California your whole yes. career so far? Uh, no, I did three year three year tour in uh, Okinawa, Japan, and then now I'm here with the uh, 11th Mew, obviously, and uh, I've been a year on Camp Pendleton. And how about you? Uh, the same. same uh, I've been two years in Pendleton. Right, right. Now, what does Mew mean? A lot of folks don't know the acronyms for things. Oh, it's okay. So the 11th Mew is a Marine Expeditionary Unit. Um, we're a warfighting unit, obviously, and we go out on ship for seven to six month tours. Hopefully a big ship and not a small yeah, ship because yeah. you don't want to get tossed around by 100-foot waves. Exactly, sir. Yeah, we don't want that. You don't want to go underwater in a ship that's supposed to be on top of the water. Right. Yes, <laughs> Has that ever happened to you? Uh, no, no, that's never happened, but I've seen it happen. <laughs> You're on an amphibious unit, a carrier or something like that? Yes, yes. Very big ship. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a decker, so it fits almost 35 uh, 100 Marines. Yeah. yeah, that's a big ship. A ship with 3,500 Marines getting ready to go somewhere. I don't know, I man. That's uh, that's got to be an experience right there. Uh, yes, sir. We work uh, hand in hand with the Navy as well on a naval ship, and we have uh, our helicopters, our carriers as well on the ship. Well, you know, you guys. Uh, I you know, wish you the best of luck. Be safe. Thank you for protecting the United States of America, the greatest country God ever created on God's blue-green earth, right. as far as I'm concerned. And uh, bringing on the color guard today, you guys are going to do it well and do it justice and do the service well, I'm sure. Yes, definitely. We have to represent for our unit. So. Absolutely. Thank you very much for your service. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Okay. Be safe and God be with you, brothers. Okay. Cool. Hey, how are you? What's your name? Let's get you guys in here, too. What's your name? 
How's it going? My name is Edward, Corporal Edward Anjando. Oh, so you're a corporal. Now, now, the difference between a corporal and the gentleman I was just talking to, for those that don't know, what is the difference? He's, a, he's an E5, I'm an E4, just one grade below. Um, he will give out the orders, they get the orders sent out on him. He'll give them to me and I'll help delegate it with the Marines, Junior Marines, like Land Squirrel Vang, and Land Squirrel BFC. So uh, orders always go from top to bottom. Correct. Yeah, so you, got, you guys get to get the orders from them, so you guys get all the hard work, huh? Yes, sir. We just follow the orders and just do our work. That's what we have to do. Absolutely. What's your name? Uh, Lance Corporal Fang. Now, did you guys go through uh, boot camp and stuff here in uh, California, or were you somewhere else in, in the United States? Uh, yes, sir. I went to MCRD. Mm -hmm. And what is that acronym for? Uh, it was a Marine Corps San Diego Recruit Deco. Depot. Right. Yeah. Fantastic. And how about yourself? I also went to the Marine Corps Recruit Deeper here in San Diego. Mm -hmm. yeah. What an experience that was for you guys, huh? Looking back? Oh, yeah. And do it again. Yeah, absolutely. Now, you are here part of the color guard today? Yes, sir. And uh, um, that means that you'll be bringing the flag in, and uh, somebody will be doing the national anthem, and uh, the Pledge of Allegiance, I'm sure, will be done too as well. Is that how it goes usually? Yes, correct. Absolutely. So you're part of this group, and you practice a lot doing this? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, it's got to be perfect. It does, sir. My yes. father served in Korea. He flew planes off the USS Lexington uh, during the Korean War. And uh, it's interesting what's happening over there now, huh? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Well, we wish you guys the best of luck, and we appreciate you Thank serving you. for our country and, and uh, putting your life on the lines for myself and my family and everybody like me. Thank you. Thank you. No problem, sir. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Want to say hi to Mom? Uh, <laughs> Hi, Mom. Okay. Come Love on, you. you. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that, but well, hey, not. Mom, if you're watching, I love you. Oh, we are live. <laughs> we are live, aren't we? Yeah. That's crazy. Okay. How about you? Want to say hi to Mom, Dad, Girlfriend, Buddy, Pal? No, I want to say uh, love you, Mom. Hope you're watching this. Uh, thank you. And how about you? Uh, love you, Mom. Uh, it's my daughter. Hello. Take care. Ah, yes. My daughter just called me, 28 years old from Chicago. You, she, you're a dad for life, brother. How about yourself? Hey, I love you, Mom. I miss you all the way back home in Wisconsin. Shout out to you. All right, man. You guys are from all around. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Enjoy yourself today. Yes. I got someone else for you to meet. Well, let's, let's, come on in here. Come on in here, Elizabeth. This is amazing. Yes, we talked. Uh, hi, Elizabeth. How are you? How are you today? I'm doing great. Good. Good to see so you. So we're live talking to an audience out here. It's going to grow as time goes on. Okay. okay. So we got this great poster behind us, this great media board, and uh, Jerry Angel's Warfighter. Have you had an opportunity to see this film, or is this your first time? It'll be my first time. However, I've seen the trailer, and, and um, that's the reason why we made this happen, because of the impact. And so we had to get the community together, and, and we wanted to make a difference. So we didn't want to just host a screening we wanted to make an impact to the community so. well the trailer is very powerful both the first trailer and the second trailer we had jerry and scott on my tv and radio show broadcast every day daily from five to six on ktnt radio and tv and across our network and uh this last week and it was terrific and we got an opportunity to play both trailers and uh, so very powerful the trailers were really done well sort of a wants to reel you in and watch watch this movie and it's important because this movie is just not a film of shoot 'em up and explosions and things like that it's really a film of meaning isn't it absolutely so you know when you go to war you come back with with everything and as a result of that impact um you may have these feelings of suicide. So we want to try to do suicide prevention and awareness. So we wanted them to have a takeaway. Yes, yeah, and the thing about this, it really covers the, the needed topic that always needs to be covered, and that's PTSD. Uh, other wars, they've called it shell shock, battle fatigue, but the current name that you know clinical psychologists have, have are using now is PTSD. And the difference between this PTSD and from previous wars and engagements that America has been in, and our soldiers, men and women, both have come back, is that is that. The suicide rate that you mentioned is so up, it's so high with our warriors and our heroes coming home, which is, makes it vastly a different problem than before. Right. I, I agree, and I also don't want to forget our firefighters, our police officers, and our nurses, uh, because suicide is, is, is everywhere. Mm -hmm. And um, so we welcome all the community to come out here, and we hope that whatever we can provide them would, would be advantageous for them as well. And what is the address here? Um, 
4501 uh, Casa Loma um, Avenue in your Belinda, California. In my Belinda? Got it. Your uh, Belinda. Uh, I, I don't have anybody in my family named Belinda, sorry. Yes, there's a joke there, I know. I had to drop it, come on. You know, you can't let a guy go by without dropping that joke every now and then. You probably haven't heard that one in a long time. No, no. <laughs> yes, I, well, it could be your Belinda, my Belinda, anybody's Belinda, right? Um, and that's uh, over here on your way to the Inland Empire, San Bernardino, Riverside, out the 91 freeway, and you can get it pretty, pretty quick. And this is a community center? Yes, a community center, yes. Okay, so it's starting here. I, I think the film starts in at about uh, about 4 or 5, 4 o'clock? 4 o'clock, yes. We're going to be here broadcasting so. live and come on out here and do that. Yes, our EMT people, police, uh, fire, nursing, people, anybody who's thrust into a combat type, type situation or zone where it's great tragedy going on and, and stressful conditions. Uh, I was in New York. I saw the uh, the remnants of the World Trade Towers after they were bombed. Um, and, boy, our firefighters there and our police, Police and our EMT people there, they're suffering badly today with the carcinogens and things. So it's just not our army people and our military. Yeah. So, you know, we start here, and I don't want us to stop here. I want us to continue to move on in other projects. So whoever is out there listening, I hope that they they join the A-team because we want to continue to make a difference for the community. So come see Warfighter today. It starts at uh, at uh, 4 o'clock here, so the clock is ticking. There's still time to buy a ticket and come on down here and support our veterans and support everything that we're doing. Thank you very much, Elizabeth. All right. Thank you so very much. Absolutely. Let's see what we can find now and talk to some more people. Hi. What's your name? You have a smiley face, so I'm going to talk to you. Thank you. you I get in my realm and my circle here. I'm, I'm, a ter- I'm like a mouse trap. That's you know, okay. I trap them. Okay. What's your name? Kip. KYP. KYP. That's an interesting name. Is it short for something longer? No, that is it. Kip. Just Kip. Short and sweet. Wow. That's that's interesting that your folks named you that. Is there a story behind that? Born in the 70s. It's the only that's all you have to say. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was born in the 60s. So okay. uh, we were still calling Bill, Jack, Bob, and Joe. Nice. But, <laughs> but by the 70s, people were calling Kip and... Yes. And the skipper. And all the yep. Of, yes. They all rhyme. <laughs> Absolutely. So what do you do? So I'm the family readiness officer for the 11th Marine Expeditionary Unit. And what does that curtail? What is that about? So I'm the liaison between all the Marine sailors. So I'm the liaison for the colonel and all the Marine sailors and their family members. Oh, okay. So you're the person that hears everybody's story. I do. And has to come to some resolution and help and direction. Absolutely. So I'm a walking, talking, resource, and referral. Yes. Crisis management. Better than Wikipedia. Better than Wikipedia. Keep Better Wikipedia. Be, yeah, keep you informed. Or Wikipedia. Keep, keep you posted. Yes. There you go. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So you have all the numbers and all the departments and all the programs available for yeah. people that need help. And PTSD is something that's really hitting hard our warriors and our heroes absolutely. this time. Much more than before. Why is that? In your opinion? I think it's out in the community more. It's more known now than in the past. It's always been there. It's Mm -hmm. nothing that we haven't had. It's always been there. We're just talking about it a lot more. We're advertising it a lot more. We're trying to take stigmas away from it. But yet we still have a very high rate of suicide with people that are coming back from combat zones and and EMT people and stuff like that. It's weird how that is. We have more engagement and more help, but yet... It doesn't seem to be working. So I think when you add combat deployments and the world we live in today is a big stress itself. So we're taking somebody who's been in a stressful environment and bringing them back to another stressful environment. So the world we live in is a crazy place. You know, that's a really good point. That's a really good point. I never thought about it like that, that you take him from a stressful, then you're actually just coming back to another stressful environment. Because it is more stressful today. Yeah, that you know that's a really good observation. See, that's why you are the I, the middle person to everybody's problems. Been there eight years in tracking. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. I married a Marine. He's been in 21 years as well. Oh, God bless him and Thank God you. bless you. You know the family it puts the time in and, and sacrifices too. I appreciate it. Yes. Thank and, you. And your children too, I imagine. Yep, one standing right behind you. Right behind me. Yeah. I better be good to mama, right? <laughs> exactly. I'll always be good to my mama, right? <laughs> that's that's yeah. it. You'll be good. Especially yeah. when a 17 year old standing He's, behind. He, he He's standing right behind you. He moved a little bit. I feel him. I feel him. I got that <laughs> sixth sense. Thank you. All right, so we look forward to seeing this movie. I'm excited. Have you seen it? I, ha- I saw a clip of it when we had meetings. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. It, it's one of those that kind of, uh, yep. 
I grabs sat next you. to one of the CBs and it was pulling on his emotions for sure. Right on. So thank you. All right. Well, thank you for coming out. Yep. All right. Hi. How are you? Uh, you you want to say, oh, you want to take a picture? Well, hi. Well, okay. Hi. What's your name? Jerry Scott. Hi, Jerry Scott. You're a veteran. How are you doing today? I'm doing fine, except for this. Ah, uh, yeah. Had four doctors examining me. None of the four can tell me what I've got. So we're still finding out. Well, doctors, it is a practice of medicine, isn't it, still? A practice. <laughs> we just happen it's to be the guinea pigs. Science. <laughs> yes. And I, no matter what your age group, you're getting practiced on in some yeah. way. Absolutely. Now, you served, at, as your hat says, World War II in Korea? Yes. So you went from World War II, I suppose you stayed in, and then Korea started. Or you got out and then went back? Uh, after World War II, I was on Okinawa, and they came up and said, if you want to go home before your points are due, we had a point system right. for going home, uh, just sign up in reserves for five years, and we'll send you home right now. I said, where do I sign? I signed. Five years later, Korea. Yeah. I think I was the first one in recall. You were, you were one of the, the first gentlemen and men that went in yeah. in the first wave, which was the toughest one because you guys saw the Not greatest Korea. battle. Uh, it was, uh, they had the Pusan Peninsula. Right. Our guys had all been driven down the Pusan Peninsula. And then the United Nations came in, which we were part of. We were actually the U United States did all the work. Of course. And, yeah. <laughs> we always do. Yeah. So I didn't have to go into all the, the uh, landing. But they told MacArthur we were there and the, the peninsula is down and they said you can't come in through RICOM because it's just too dangerous. And the tides, 15 foot tides. MacArthur says to hell with it. We're going in. And they came in, and that was the end of it as far as running them up north. Right, right. And Were you Marine, Army? I was Army first time. 47, the Army broke off from the Marines, or Marines, and they transferred me to the Air Force. So, If I could ask you, what was the big difference coming out of World War II as a fighting and a combat veteran? Uh, what was the difference... In coming out of World War II and that engagement, and the engagement that we were thrust into in Korea, what, in, from your point of view, what, what was the difference to you? I, I wasn't in combat in Okinawa, but I had the whole south end of the island I was in charge of, and I had uh, 200 men down there, and we had to go in and get the Japs that were still there. They, they would not surrender. So... I'm not supposed to say jokes. That's okay. Uh, it's all right by me because that's what they were referred to then. They were referred to as that way. And so you have to speak to the history and be truthful. It, we do it. I, I do it yet. And uh, it, it, we went back, my wife and I, three times, uh, two times to Korea. Mm -hmm. And when we went up on the, the military zone, which you see now, when you see the, Korea and the supposed talks, when you see General Yu, the dictator, he's right there where we were. That's, That's an amazing where, thing. Amazing. Yeah. I've been there. I've had the opportunity to be there. And I've had the opportunity to experience the history there and a private tour there. Uh, and we got as close as they would allow us to be at the time, about 15, 18, 20 years ago. And uh, my father served on the USS Lexington in Korea. He flew planes off the Lexington, a tanker plane, uh, at the end of the Korean War. He got involved at the end. My father's 84, so um, he, uh, he enlisted in the Navy. Oh, yeah. That respect. Well, thank you for your service. I appreciate it. No. KTNT Radio and TV. We broadcast on 25 social media networks and on radio across America. We're on about 25 stations and also online radio as well. So we're out here covering the event Warfighter for Jerry Angelo and uh, covering this film here and because it has a lot of meaning for PTSD, people who are, are, are having those challenges and issues. And uh, it's a terrific film. I hope you can stay to watch it. Oh, I'm going to watch it for sure. Yeah, absolutely. My older brother was in the Battle of the Bulge in uh, Europe. Oh, boy. Laid in the snow for three days because they, we couldn't get in the air. Nope. Nope. And he came back, 
and he was a walking time bomb. Yeah, and they didn't have anything. No, they didn't have anything like that. Uh, no. just, um, nothing like that. This is uh, in the last 30 years or so. This kind of help has developed, and it has to get better. But at least it's been a start. But uh, yeah, if it wasn't for the Battle of the Bulge, we'd all be speaking German, because uh, <laughs> because that was uh, Hitler's uh, last big push, and Patton coming down, moving his tank unit in there, s saved the day at the last. The way he traversed the continental Europe so quickly, and uh, uh, the Battle of the Bulge, we were we were on the on the teeter totter of losing that, and uh, uh, it was not for the troops, the American troops, and our Allied forces, just being able to withstand the harsh winter. My goodness. Well, that's why the battle was so, was so long. We couldn't get our Air Force in. Once the weather cleared up and the Air Force came in, that was the end of it. Absolutely. Well, thank you for your service. Remember one other thing? Yes. Patton said. I love said, Patton. Huh? I love Patton. I do, too. As he came up to Berlin, he was pulled back and said, you can't go up there. He said, look. We should go right on through Moscow. Yeah, and MacArthur wanted to go to Beijing or Peking. And he was so right. They were both right. Yeah. They were both absolutely. They had all the German troops that did not like the, that did not the Axis forces that did not like the Russians, and uh, they were they were enemies forever anyway. And then we had the whole uh, east side of Russia, which was basically easy to go through China. China was a neutral nation, but they were more pro. American and they were Russian and right. German and so uh, but yeah we uh, it's apropos when you look at back at what they knew well and as far as I'm concerned they killed Patton and they retired MacArthur but that's a whole nother story yes it is uh, is there any regular station I can get you people? yeah you can let me give you my business card and and uh, you can uh, you can watch it here uh, right after you leave it it'll be up and posted there you go absolutely they're all on the back and the front Thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank you for your service, sir. All right, let's see what we can do. We're kind of moseying around here, who we can catch up with. Okay. I love all those pins. Can you Thanks. tell me about those pins? Uh, I'm yeah. Jesse Terrero from KTNT Radio and TV. Hey, Jesse, how are you? Very good. Uh, my name's Clay Baxter. I'm the commander of the Richard M. Nixon American Legion Post. I've uh, been a member of the American Legion Met Veteran Service Organization for over 30 years. And all of these pins represent the post, uh, what, what positions I've held for the American Legion. You're looking at the, uh, the one here is, uh, I was the district commander or the area five commander and I had 40,000 people that I was working with. Uh, this is because I was a district commander at one time. I had 29th district, that's all of Orange County. And that's my basic uh, American Legion pin that shows when I joined, that's what I received. This pin right here, this, Amer this is related to a company that I used to work for, Merrill Lynch, and the mule, the, as you can see, the emblem of the Merrill Lynch is there, but this represents four members that I knew that were killed in 9-11, two in each of the buildings uh, that were killed. And I have never stopped wearing this on my suit since that day. God bless you, man. Absolutely. Thank, thank and, and these two pins on this side, sir? These two pins. This is from uh, the Department of Defense. It's related to the Vietnam War era, which we received last year at the Yorba Linda Veterans Memorial. Nice. Uh, this pin represents my uh, participation with the Marine Corps, which I was in the Marines for six years as a helicopter gunner during the World of Vietnam War. My neighbor was a, a helicopter gunner as well during Vietnam, Jimmy Green, and wow. and uh, he did uh, many tours. He stayed there because he didn't want to come home. <laughs> you know, he didn't want to leave his guys. Well, that, we we commend you and appreciate the service that you put in. My father served in Korea. My dad, my grandpa served to protect the Panama Canal from the Germans and the Japanese trying to torpedo it in World War II. And I didn't serve, but uh, uh, but uh, we do come from a family of service, and I really appreciate what you've done for our well, country. Uh, the reason why I joined the Marine Corps, I'm the only member of my family that uh, joined the Corps or the military. My father was a Army Air Corps veteran, World War II. He was on the Philippines the day the war started in World War II. Uh, he was a oh survivor of the Bataan Death March. He escaped oh from it three times. Uh, we did several television programs with him in 1983 uh, on NBC. But uh, I tell you what, he is quite an inspiration, and he really 
goes along with what this movie is about today. That is the results of battle and the results of PTSD. Right. Uh, and in, in that day, they called it, they called it uh, battle fatigue. They called it combat, uh, shell shock. They called it different things, but it was the same thing. It is the same thing. And the really good thing about me being in the Marine Corps, once I joined, then he was able to ask me to help him recover. And that was from 1966 when he started wanting to recover from his PTSD or battle fatigue. Yeah, beautiful, man. Sometimes it's... Un it's understanding from somebody who's been there, and that's the key part. That's it's the key part. It's truly unbelievable, but he would... The reason why I helped him, because every time he went to sleep, either he took a nap or he slept at night, he would start screaming in Japanese. So what I did is I went up and snuck up on him when he was sleeping one night and recorded what he was screaming. And I found out on the translation that he was yelling his number that they gave him when he was transferred from the Philippines to Japan. Oh, so his POW number was 378. Wow. So to help him recover, I brought that up to him. We brought him, uh, we bought him uh, inf information and provided the information on his in shirts that we bought for him, we put the 378 number on there. What a lot of people don't know, the the, the the march that he's talking about, these were servicemen that were left in the Philippines after MacArthur pulled out. There was about 20,000 of, I believe, and uh, they were under uh, one of MacArthur's favorite generals, uh, and, and he did all that he could to keep his, uh, to keep as a commander of all of the POWs uh, in out of harm's way and safe and fed. And, but uh, so many uh, great men were lost in, in that, in that, at that time yeah. from that. And uh, it's, it's a phenomenal story. If you ever get a chance historically to read about it, it really is one of the testaments to uh, never wanting to give up. Right. And he didn't give up when he was, when the uh, baton group when they collapsed, he fought with the Filipino guerrillas. And those guys were some tough guys. They were tough, and yeah. let me believe, and I know that he's very tough. Uh, however, when they did capture him, uh, he was coming down from the mountains to get supplies, and a Japanese patrol captured him. But he did escape from them, even though he was bayoneted. Uh, and he did march on the Bataan Death March three times and escaped from that three times. <laughs> But he was ultimately... Uh, he was the Steve McQueen of his day, the great escape, right? <laughs> Absolutely. And, and the third time, uh, they marched him through the uh, Manila because wow. they were going to behead him because he fought with the Filipino guerrillas. But he was in such good shape, uh, they kept him in a number of the POW camps, and he exited Cabana Tawan, and they took him to uh, northern Japan. Wow. This is a photograph of him with his number 382. Let's see I that. said 378. It's 382. That is his, Hold that up. That is his picture uh, that I keep with me at all times. So I'll never forget what he did for our country and for his other members that were with him when he was captured. And that's what it's all about. It's that simple. It's that simple. Absolutely simple. Your buddies, your partners in war and your combat, your combat uh, platoon, the guy right next to you in a foxhole, whatever you're at in the jungle, and then your, your core and then your country. Absolutely, sir. Absolutely. God bless you. Thank you. Enjoy the movie. Thank you, sir. Appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. Let's... Jerry, 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 Kel. So tell me what's going on here. Clay, Clay's the man. We just talked to oh, Clay. Good. Yeah, we just good. had a great, great interview. Yeah, we had a great talk. Oh, yeah, good. absolutely. And, and and we're raising money for the 11th Mew, and oh, so okay. um, that helps out. Is there a website or something? Yeah, is there something? We do have a website. It's called the 11th Mew. And so that's where we are. Uh, you can see the information about the group. We can see the individual information about the association, which was created in 2016, and also the 11th View organization. They have their own site, 11th View Marine Corps. So, yeah, 11th View .gov. I got to stick my face, Jerry. Hey, you got. You got to say. I want to thank this gentleman for making this all possible. Thank you very much, and thank you so much for your service, sir. Yeah. Thank you. This is all happening because of Clay. So. Absolutely, guy. Don't go on. Talk to you guys. And I got my, my shirt. I got my Rock for Vets T-shirt. One last thing. Oh, yeah. One one last thing I wanted to say. And um, one of the interesting things about that that march that they did, that his family member was a part of and survived and tr and escaped three times in his in his in his uh, prisoner as a prisoner. He escaped three times. One of the things 
if they got away, they had nowhere to go. That's right. Because the whole, all the Filipino islands, the 90 plus islands there, were filled full of Japanese combatants. And, and they had nowhere to go. So when they did escape, they not only had to escape just the incarceration, but they had to escape from being recaught again mm -hmm. until MacArthur came back. Mm -hmm. So when MacArthur came back, that was quite a feat. Yes, it was. It was quite a feat for him to come back and take over the Philippines again because it was such a great country. Uh, if you recognize people that fought with the American soldiers, the Filipinos did, you'll see how brave they were and how what the, the what that country did to honor the U.S. We had several members who have won the Medal of Honor, but we want you to know that uh, we appreciate everything they did with us and our troops and bringing our family members back. Thank you, sir. We got to get in and watch the movie, so go go on in there. Uh, let's see what we got going on here. All right. I'm going to see who I can bother in there. Hello. Did our, our guys go in already? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, well, one of them's out there. Jerry's over there. Oh, okay. There's Jerry. Okay. It allows you the opportunity to. All right. So we're going to kind of walk in here and, and see how things are going and see who we can catch up and talk to here. So what we're, what's happening right now is that uh, they're about ready to start the movie between 4 and 4.30 here. It's called Warfighter. And it's a movie about uh, our warriors from the Iraqi-Afghanistan war coming back, starring uh, Jerry Angelo, as well as Scott and Grotti. And they're playing it here in Yorba Linda uh, to raise money for those that are suffering from PTSD. And they asked us to come out and uh, cover it for them, and it was my pleasure to do that, absolutely, uh, because this is a meaningful movie and a meaningful project, and we want you to get behind it. You can check it out at... Um, at warfighter.com www.warfighter.com and uh, you can uh, watch the trailer one and trailer two and then uh, at the website they will have the the uh, the locations where the film is being uh, shown one by one so that they can really emphasize some of the things and the issues that some of our heroes have Scott and Grotti everybody Scott how are you doing buddy? I'm good man thank you so much for coming out. Oh, it's my pleasure. Absolutely. This is a terrific event, and it's, it's great talking. Let's move over here. Otherwise, we're going to get It's great talking to some of these veterans um, about the history and how they served and the people they knew. Uh, just uh, it really is an honorable thing that we're doing here, and I really appreciate it really you guys. And I, I appreciate you covering this and being part of this thing. Um, and we're going to take this out, and we're going to get this out to everybody that we can. Um, it's a very important issue. Uh, um, it's, it's humbling being around all the vets that have actually lived this. We get to act like that. They actually lived it. Uh, yeah. their, their stories are incredible. Yeah, it's just incredible. And the fact that you make that point, it's very true. Actors get to act a lot, and they get to do the research, and they can become the part, and then they go home, and it's all over with. But these right. men and women live with this 24-7. They do. It's in their mind. It's in their body. It's in their soul. It's uh, I, I can't imagine. I, I, I just... Uh, yeah. It's, it's mind-blowing. Right. You know, it's an honor to actually be able to portray them and act like them. And like you said, I can go home and put it in my closet and yeah. never think about it again. They live with it, man. Every single day of the Every week. Every single day. And uh, that's what this movie is about. And that's the beauty of, of the, the film called Warfighter, the feature film. Uh, produced, directed, written by uh, Jerry Angelo. And he's coming this way, so I just want to get a word for him because they're about ready to start the yeah. film here. Jerry, real quick before you guys go in and start. Um, we Steve too. Hey, Steve. Yeah. Hi, yeah. how are you? Hi, Steve. What's Steve's your name? Steve, I was a stuntman in the movie. And he's Steve. a veteran, too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you are? Of uh, uh, what war? Panama, Honduras. So and the first the 80s, yeah. the 80s late eight, mid 80s yeah. late 90s uh -huh. okay. you know uh there's a lot to talk about there and i'd love <laughs> to talk but i know you guys got to get going so we'll talk a little bit afterwards but thank you for your service steve and uh transcending into the stunt work a natural huh <laughs> <laughs> yes sir it is <laughs> experience getting blown up yeah so <laughs> you might, might as well do it on camera that's your specialty they blow you up now yeah, everywhere <laughs> So yeah. real quick, you never see him in the movie, but you see all of him in the yes. movie. <laughs> well, there's some parts I really don't want to see. Thank you. <laughs> but uh, hey, man, thank you for having us out here. Dude, it's good to see you again. Can we, I kiss you? No. 
Mwah. You can kiss me. Just don't kiss me on the lips or kiss me on the ass. Either way, because <laughs> the Mama T will get jealous. Oh, sorry, sorry, Mama T. I was just, it's just friendly. Yeah, no, no. Actually, I am in love with this man. You don't know it, you know. No, no, I'm not. It, well, he, well look actually, at my eyes. he has. Like he is Chinese also eyes. awful handsome. Yes, he's like going to be a superstar, and then he's going to give me a job. But I'm not going to wash his dishes. Okay. I like to wash dishes. Okay, I like to mow lawns. Okay, well. Then you go mow lawn. You can mow my lawn anytime. <laughs> After I sell you the big pad and make a nice commission, because I am a real estate broker. Thank you very much, yes, for cool. 40 See years. You guys. Okay. Hey, they're going in. Tell me real quickly uh, your feelings about uh, the showing of, of your film uh, in Tehachapi and showing today, and, and, and what, is, what is the embarking taking? Where are you going next? Oh, gosh. Okay. Well, um, I, everything's been going incredibly well. Um, the... God. And uh, sheesh, the next the next viewing is actually going to be in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Um, we're playing for 300 people there um, on June 8th, and then we have uh, two dates in Santa Fe coming up. So we're, we're we'll be moving right along to the southwest. Albuquerque, big military town, one of the largest yeah. military bases in Albuquerque. In fact, Albuquerque became Albuquerque because of the military base uh, and Bugs Bunny. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and you didn't know that. I didn't know See that. Tia. Yeah. Have a good one. All right, Scott. Thanks a lot, man. Okay, Appreciate we'll see it. You just a little bit. Uh, we're gonna get this show on the road here, and uh, yeah. absolutely. Yes. All right, guys. Hey, we're broadcasting live here on KTNT Radio and TV. We're out here in Yorba Linda for the presentation and the screening of a brand new film called War Fighter, written, directed, and produced, and lead actor uh, Jerry Angelo. And the reason why we're out here is because uh, this movie has a lot of meaning to our combatants, our heroes, our warriors, or or or, or having having an issue with a PTSD and uh, the issues that they have. Uh, coming home uh, from one stressful environment to another stressful environment and not having the lack of a mission and and all the things that, that happen when you're in in battle and you're in combat and so you know we're here to support that because we want to uh, get the word out and get the message out uh, of what needs to be done to help our our veterans and nothing is done to uh, to better than to actually get out here and participate for you. Um, any participation you can have w involving yourself with veterans and veterans' families is, is highly needed because they have, they have obligated their lives to protect your life and mine too. And, and the, the, the minimal thing we can do is appreciate them in supporting uh, their rehabilitation, both physically, mentally, socially, psychologically, uh, financially. We need to take care of our veterans more. And I'm happy President Trump fired a whole bunch of people from the VA and the bureaucracy there. Not enough has been done. At least that's a start. We got to start getting that in order and we got to start taking care. Just like they did in World War II, where the veterans came back after World War II, they've got uh, free education, they've got uh, uh, low interest loans on house, they could buy a house with no money down. Uh, they had respect and honor. Uh, um, they got they got a good job. Um, they had the ability to build dignity and have another mission in life. We need to do that for our veterans today. In fact, we're all children of veterans in this country. Uh, it's an amazing, amazing statistic when you look at it. So we're out here in Yorba Linda, uh, and you can check it out at www.warfighter.com. And we're here to see the film Warfighter. And uh, hey, it's me, Jesse T., always in the place to be because trying to make the best effort that we can and the most impact we can with, uh, with you, my friends. We invite you to share this, link it out, share it out, link it out, talk about it, and get the word out because we do need your help and they need your help. So let's get together and make it happen. This is the Jesse T Show. About ready to go and check out the movie Warfighter by Jerry Angelo and, uh, and starring also Scott and Grotti. Appreciate you guys for having us out here. We'll be talking to you in a little bit. Take care. We're on the air and everywhere from the community to the world on KTNT Radio and TV. Back in a few.